Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome back to The Average Fisherman. Got a big episode today, rare big Monday episode, so I got the John Wayne coffee mug here. So today's episode was brought about by a viewer comment on one of my previous videos. So that's why I always say if you have a question or something you want me to cover in a video or something like that, leave it down in the comments, and I'll, I'll pick the ones that actually will make good episodes, and I'll make one for you, just for you. So... The question was, when I was talking about in a previous video, the fact that I am 99% a finesse fisherman because that is what I love to do, he said, hey man, in a lot of your previous videos, I've seen you throwing frogs. And technically, frogs are a power fishing technique. And he's right. It's true. But he said, how about you do an episode all about the frogs and the equipment that you use when you're frog fishing? So that's what this is about. And I'm going to go over some tricks and stuff like that that I do when I go fishing with topwater frogs. So, first things first. Oh, I moved it here. Previously, the equipment side, what I was using, and you guys have seen it in a couple videos, is this reel, this old Revo S reel, the white, one of the old white ones. And I had this, this has 40 pound braid on it simply because that's just what I had left over from spooling up some saltwater reels. Um, and I don't have the rod that I had it paired up anymore because I traded it in. So I had it paired up to one of the original, the original series or original run of the Abu Garcia Veritas rods. And that was a seven foot three heavy. And everybody knows because um, I even made comments about it in previous uh, videos about the fact that it was pretty uncomfortable to use. It was really heavy. The, the handle design on it was really kind of poor and it was really hard to use for extended periods of time simply because it, it was like an aluminum bat. It weighed so much and despite the fact, even though I know it was a heavy rod, I don't expect rods to have a tip that's so stiff that you have to practically pull them with a crane in order to get the tip to bend, but that rod was actually way overly stiff. So that coupled with this old Revo SX, despite the fact that it's a decent reel, you know, has an aluminum frame, all metal frame, it's really durable, this also weighs a lot. So what it ended up with is a really heavy, uncomfortable to use combo, which is why I didn't use topwater frogs as more than I actually did. Because the truth of the matter is, topwater frogs is actually probably my second favorite way to bass fish. Everybody knows that you, you love that top water bite, right? Everybody gets super excited when they go to a place and the, and the bass are busting on the top water because it's just there's few things that are as exciting as bass taking a top water lure. And for me, the hollow body frog is the king of the top water lures. So, as I alluded to a few minutes ago, I traded in that old Veritas rod at Bass Pro Shops in order to put together a better, what I feel, more high quality combination. So before I say anything, again, I'm not sponsored, will never be sponsored. I make my own money working in a medical field. I'm never paid to give opinions. So the only opinion that I give you is the one that I genuinely have based upon the fact that if I spend money for a product, do I think it's worth it or not? Plain and simple. So what I bought was a Johnny Morris combo from Bass Pro Shops. Now, I already know what a lot of you are gonna say. But the deal is that really, honestly, truly, and this is, this is the truth, the quality of the Johnny Morris Bass Pro Shops equipment has actually really gone up, okay? So I don't have one, and, and I'm not just saying that because I have one now, okay? I have one now because that's a fact. The quality has gone up to the point where I feel they're actually really good deal for the price that you pay for this equipment, and you're actually getting really good equipment for the money that you pay. So... Let me show you guys the combination first, and I just grabbed the empty box. This is one of the new Johnny Morris Carbon Light Technique-specific rods, and I have the Frog Rod, okay? It's a six foot nine heavy fast, and it's made with their RT4 graphite, and I paired it up with one of the new revamped Carbon Light reels. They make these in a pearl white as opposed to like the previous, like, you know, chalky white color too. If you prefer the white to go with the, the newer revamped white Carmen Light 2.0 rods. But let me give you the specs on the reel first. It's a 10 bearing system, aluminum frame um, with 14 pounds of drag. And it is an 8.3 to 1 and uh, dual brakes. So it has centrifugal brakes and, an ad and, and adjustable, externally adjustable magnetic brake. Um, I just got to say, I used this once, 
I was going to post a video about it, um, but I didn't I didn't actually end up posting it because I got rained out like the, after like six or seven minutes of filming it. But I have to tell you guys, and I'm and again, I'm not saying this because I own this. I own this because I can say this. Get it? This rod is an excellent rod. Okay, it has the nice, super nice wind grip, and I've had previous Abu rods that have the wind grips on them, and I love those. And I have to say, this is no different. The wind grip makes it. I'm just going to tell you, super comfortable. But this combination of the new Technique specific rod with the new revamped and lighter weight um, carbon light reel, this thing weighs, I'm not kidding you guys, a quarter of what my old frog combo weighs. It's a super lightweight rod for what it is. It's a heavy action, like I said, and it's made out of quality materials, okay? I also plan on using this with heavyweight punching rigs and jigs because this is an ideal setup for that situation too. What I have it spooled up with is not my usual Hercules braid. This is Suffolk's Pro Mix in 30 pound, four strand, because I don't need something as fine and don't want it technically. Uh, to be as smooth as like the eight strand Hercules that I typically buy. So the four strand, um, because that's what the Suffix Pro Mix is, it's a four carrier braid. And I use 30 pound on this because I'm going to be throwing it in a slop and into, you know, reeds and stuff like that and using heavy jigs to punch through cover with it. But I tried it out both using top water frogs and uh, half ounce jigs and up to an ounce jig. And it performed flawlessly, guys. This, this thing is light years ahead of the old combination I had, which was an Abu Garcia combo. And that's another thing. People have accused me of being an Abu Garcia fanboy. And I like their products, but if I find something that works better, I'm getting the other thing. You know what I mean? So the new Johnny Morris Carmen Light Technique specific, they're the gray rods or the carbon colored rods with the new upgraded reel. This is my new frog rod and heavy punching rig uh, setup. 30 pound uh, suffix pro mix. So let's go over some of the lures that I have. And these are the predominant types of top water lures that I'm going to use. And I want to show you guys the two top water frogs that I own that I have caught the most fish. Okay. Predominantly, it's going to be this guy. This is a bronze eye. Okay. It's kind of torn up back here because it's caught so many. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera with all the splits and stuff from being, from being bit and pulled in. But I've caught a lot. And I think it's the size that matters with this one. If you notice, the body of the frog is only about an inch and a half, maybe an inch and three quarters long. And people say if you want big fish, you have to use big baits. That is not true. I've caught several bass in the six and seven pound range on this size frog. The only thing using a huge frog does is it discourages the slightly smaller fish from biting it. But I don't think the big fish really give a shit whether your 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 frog is an inch and a half or two and a half inches long. If it's something on top of the water and they're hungry, they're going to eat it one way or the other. It doesn't matter how big or small it is. So this is the size frog that I like the most. Okay, One of the frogs that I use a lot in super heavy cover, and I do mean super heavy, as in throwing it back into the swamp, over logs, through lilies and stuff like that, has been this guy. It's a scum frog. And this thing has been has caught so many fish. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but look at all the you, there it is. You can see all the paint that's missing off of this red hook. Look at that. That is from bass hitting this thing. And I think if I had to take a guess why the bass really have hammered this thing, it's that bottom texture. Look at that. The bottom texture of this lure is excellent. Most have a solid color. But because this thing is patterned, I think fish really key in on that when they take a look at it before they decide if they're going to hit it. And the scum frog has come through some of the heaviest stuff that I've thrown it into, despite the fact that the hooks are kind of angled up. So I have a revamp collection here to replace some of the frogs that I've been using that have just gotten too torn up to be serviceable. You throw them out, they sink almost immediately because the bodies are so torn up. So I'm going to go over the new lures that I have here to replace the older ones that I have that are just too torn up to be functional anymore. And of course, you're going to recognize a lot of these names because either I've talked about them before or you guys have them yourself or know somebody who does. One of the most popular frogs from north to south, east to west is going to be the Spro Bronze Eye Frog 65. And I have two of those here. So this is one of my favorite colors. It's called Killer Gill. 
And that's because of this side and bottom texture here. It's kind of metallic, it's hard to get, and I haven't opened the pack yet. But this is this I use in in like lily pads and stuff like that where I know there's a lot of bluegill around and things like that and I can hear them popping. I'll throw this one right up on top of the lilies. It really works well. Second one I have here is called Nasty Shad. I use this in place of the common, you know, stark white or bone colored frog. And if you notice, most of my frogs will be in either dark, dark or really light colors. So I'm covering all the bases here and it has that nice red cheek there that really gets the, uh, the fish to key in on it. But that's another Bronze Eye uh, 65 by Spro. So these really work well, I'm just gonna tell you. So I have the dark and the light color here. Next one, Booyah Pad Crasher Jr. And it's in this brown color. Let me see if I can see it real quick. It's a Cricket Frog. I've had one of these in the past and it has that little yellow cheek up on top with the slightly patterned white bottom. And like I said, this is my favorite size of frog to throw. These little Pad Crasher Jr. size has caught me the most fish out of any of the other size frogs. But Sometimes you need a little bit heavier weight. The wind may be blowing a little more, so I go to the upsized frogs. But this is a great frog to throw here. Here's a standard pad crasher. This one is also a cricket frog color with the yellow cheek. You can see the bottom a little better on this one. So this is more of an intermediate size frog. Love this frog a lot. So two of the lures that I very rarely you, you see on my channel because often it's when I'm going pleasure fishing and stuff like that, and I don't bring my camera along. But I did need them because I, I've caught so many fish on them, they have just gotten torn up to the point where I can't really use them anymore. And that is one of these. It's a topwater toad. So everybody thinks that toads are like, you know, the solid plastic made by like Zoom or something like that, and you pull them along and the, and the, the legs kick in the water and make that little bloop, 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 bloop sound when they come through. These do the same thing, but they're hollow body so that you can throw them like a topwater frog. They're not as weedless. If you look at the hook placement on there, they're not as weedless as a, a traditional true hollow body frog, but they do get the job done if you're pulling them through like light duckweed and stuff like that. They won't get so much trash on them that you end up having to like stop after every cast and pull stuff off. So I like these a lot and these are called top toads. One of the other lures, that's kind of one of my secret weapons that um, I've never really talked about on the, sh on the channel before. Now, this is a new version of that kind of bait, but I've always had one of these in my arsenal, and that is a topwater fish. So this is a live target. I just bought this one to give this one a try, but it's a topwater fish. So I've always used this, uh, uh, some version of this. Everybody has had the situation where you've caught like a little bluegill or something like that because you're bluegill fishing, you take him off, you didn't notice he was a little deep hooked or something like that. You throw him in the water and if, or release him back. And a few minutes later, you see him kind of kicking around on the surface. And then he gets close to the bank and a huge bass will come up, bloom, get him because they see that little injured fish swimming around. Well, that's what these imitate. You throw these up near cover and kind of do some erratic twitching on top of the water like that and these get absolutely hammered. So those are the predominant styles of topwater lures that I use. Frogs, either medium to small size. I do not fish the great big size frogs. I don't use like the rat or mouse lures or anything like that. Top water frogs in the medium or small, like this size and this size. This is about as big as I'll get when I throw top water frogs, these pad crashers. And these small little bronze eyes are the, the ones that I throw the most. And then along with the top water fish, these, these are a secret weapon. I'm just gonna tell you guys. Um, I've caught some really big fish on these top water fish and the floating toads. But I also use that same combination, my, my frogging rod to throw pretty heavy jigs. This is a pretty light one. It's a three eighths ounce, but I just wanted to show these to you because right now at Bass Pro Shops, these are 50% off. So the Terminator style, and they had a bunch of Terminator, um, um, spinner baits and a ton of different jigs and a bunch of different weights. So go out and get these if you guys are, are looking for that. This is a green pumpkin with orange on the bottom to mimic a bluegill. But if you have a spot in your arsenal or you're trying to fill a hole in your arsenal for a top water rod or a heavy cover rod or a heavy jig punching rig, jo uh, um, rig, this is the one to get. I'm just gonna tell you guys, 
the Johnny Morris Carbon Light Technique specific rods, they, they have gone a step up. Now, the thing that I noted when I bought this combination is, despite the fact that this is a 6 foot 9 heavy fast, I compared this to one of the Carbon Light 2.0 six foot nine heavy fast rods and the diameter of this butt section here is much lower on this rod and I talked to a couple of the workers there and a guy that he has he doesn't know for sure so take this with a grain of salt but he said that he thinks they're using slightly more higher modulus graphite in these than they are the white rods so they can make them at a smaller diameter now I don't know if that's true or not, and frankly, I don't, I don't really care. I'm just mentioning the fact that these rods have a smaller diameter than the white Carbon Light 2.0s. These are like four years newer, so it wouldn't surprise me if they're using a different manufacturer or they have improved the materials to the point where they can make these a little smaller and lighter because the Technique-specific rods are lighter than the, the bright white Carbon Light 2.0s. In the updated reels, the, the white one and the, the gray one like this, they're identical. I, I looked at the specs. I held them both, spun them both. They're the same. They're upgraded and, and significantly, in my opinion, they're significantly upgraded. And they're much lighter than they used to be. They still have an all-metal frame. You know, really good specs, really smooth to use. I love the handles on these things. It's just it's the right mix of soft and, and grippy. And these wind grips on these new technique-specific rods or just, you can see the texture a little bit. There you go. Really, really, really nice. Really comfortable combo and very sensitive. I caught a probably a pound and a half bass on, on a um, three quarter ounce jig when I was fishing around grass, just testing it out. And I immediately knew he was there. I felt the little slight tick when he picked it up. That rod is really like light years away more sensitive than the old original series Veritas that I was using by Abu Garcia. This is superior in every way to that old combination that I have, and I'm really glad to fill the hole that I had. Plus, get rid of an older piece of equipment and get a pretty significant discount on some newer, nicer stuff. So, that's my new topwater and um, heavy jig punching combination. And these are the topwater lures that I use when I go frog fishing. I've got some unboxing to do and replace some of my old torn up frogs. So I have pretty much the rest of the afternoon set out for me, getting my, my new frogs and new top waters and new jigs all organized and stuff like that. I hope you guys found this video informative. If you do, please drop a like and think about subscribing. I noticed that, you know, um, I think my analytics data was 92% of the people who view my videos aren't even subscribed. And I really genuinely, honestly, guys, tried to put out informative content that you guys can get a lot out of. So, and I'm leaving this till the end of the video so that way I'm not bothering anybody who just wanted all the information. Please think about subscribing to the channel because it really, it, it shows and gives more motivation to me to continue putting out this amount of effort and doing all the research that I do before I come over here and give you guys advice and spend my own money <laughs> buying all this equipment so that way I can tell you guys worth it or not. So, y'all have a good Monday. I'll see you on the water. We're making a kayak trip tomorrow. Tight lines, my friends.